what is going on guys? It's your boy Cecil here, bringing us a video here today, bringing guys a Photoshop tutorial on how to create your very own cool one minute better design, and the title of the video is hopefully down there because I have no idea whatsoever what I'm going to call it yet. I have abstract lava or ab lava abstract, no idea what I'm going to call it, but of course today we're going to be utilizing, uh, utilizing excuse me, the liquify tool. Um, it's kind of been like a, a bit of a, how do you say, a trend in like the one minute better designs, but I think liquify has literally the most endless amount of different things you can do. I guess when it comes to like the liquify effect and making things out of it, it's how you kind of start off. And uh, yeah, today we're gonna be starting off with a very simple organic shape and then just really creating some really freaking dope depth, liquidy, kind of flowy, kind of almost, if for some reason reminds me of Iron Man, probably the colors. Um, but here I have another example as well. Right, another different kind of flow. So no matter how many times you get, end up doing it or however you, I guess, do it in the first place, right, you're always going to come up with something different than someone who, else, who does it as well. That's the whole kind of like bit of abstract. It's kind of fun, kind of random, um, but it looks good in the end. You know, it can be used for, you know, poster, uh, banner design, background, whatever it happens to end up being used for. I think it's a super cool effect. I want you guys to do it. So let's just get this thing going. And uh, yeah, let's just 200 likes on the video. It goes a secret down below as always. And if you guys have not subscribed, hit the bell icon. You should probably do that as well. Just saying. Just uh, All right, let's go. All right, guys. So to go at this thing going, we're gonna be using a simple good old organic shape now to show you guys this shape is right here um so for quick reason being why we're actually using the shape is simply because if you guys know how like liquify if you guys usually look at other liquify tutorials and or even some of my own right you most likely are gonna see liquify that kind of has like a lot of streaks a lot of different like pulled pixels and uh, I don't know let me just give you an example let me just like let's give you like this example over here right let's go to liquify really quick Right, most of the times you're gonna be seeing liquify that kind of looks more like this, right? Like I can't, I can't. My mouse is broke. Uh, too much, too much wham being youth. Uh, please, uh, help. F Photoshop, bro. It's just liquify. What the oh, okay. Okay, there we go. Cool. Anyway, what I meant was this right here, right? This like little area. You're gonna see like, a lot of pulled streaks. Um, reason being, right, is because most people like when they use liquify, they're of course using, I guess, like a solid shape, maybe like a square, for instance, where they're basically pulling pixels and kind of then having to make their own shape afterwards. But when you guys start off with an organic shape, when you guys are liquify this, you guys will see, of course, as well, but. If you guys come in and out through this way, you're gonna get like really pulling this area here, pulling this area down here. It'll make more of that kind of like loopy feel, which kind of a liquify automatically gives you just of course by dragging your mouse, right? But when you guys cop the actual shape to the actual tool itself, you get really, really cool effects and effects that cannot be done without actually uh, making the shape in the first place. So with that being said, I'll give you guys a shape as well in the description down below so you guys have it, um, just so you can get used to it and whatever. Um, or you can make your own, like with the pen tool, right? Just like basically making like eye drops, right? Kind of, let's just try this, like boom, click drag, click drag pretty wide, do the same thing on this side, do the same thing on this side, making a big one here, right? And then like doing the same thing. Oh, kindergarten, anyway, cool. So once you guys have the shape, you guys can download or make your own. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys the codes I'm using today's video. So they uh, actually have two things on my shape. I have a gradient overlay as well as a drop shadow. So for my gradient overlay, I have basically simple blues. On the left hand side, I have hex code 0054B2. And on the right hand side, I have 00499C. So that's what I have for my gradient. Now for my drop shadow that I also have as well, I have the color like a nice little darker blue. So the hex code 040418. Now, excuse me. Um, the reason why we're using not solid black for a drop shadow for this instance and actually using a, a color or a darker shade of color um, being uh, an actual color for this instance, not pure black, but like blue, reds, whatever, right? Is because you guys use camera filter raw and you guys use the hue, saturation, and luminance HSL adjustments in that actual um, table. You guys will be uh, actually taking your actual colors. So for this instance, it'll when you guys move the blue hue slider or the saturation slider or the luminance slider, um, it's going to obviously change that color because this has blue tints in it. It, and Photoshop will see that and recognize it, but if it was black, it would not work out. So when you guys are choosing your colors for your own, of course, whatever, you know, exploration, um, make sure it's not solid black. So that's the color there. Zero distance, zero spread, size at 150, noise at zero. I'm going to press OK, and we're pretty much good to go. Also, the background color is uh, 005084 for the hex code, and we're all good to go. So... <laughs> for this, I'm going to literally take my shape here, and I'm going to pre pretty much start it off in like a very, very tight left corner. So with this left corner, I can hold Alt on my keyboard, click on the shape, and drag. This will make duplicates really, really quick for us without having to press Control J to uh, make it a select, uh, how do you say, make a duplicate, or like taking the actual layer, dragging it into new layer. We don't have to do all that, or press Control J. Just literally hold Alt and move it. Very, very simple, okay? 
So now with this shape here, this is shape number two, I'm not going to name all of them because we're going to be basically doing uh, maybe a total of seven or eight shapes. So this is shape number two, I'm going to press control T on my keyboard. I'm going to actually rotate this quite a bit, right? And I'm going to also do this uh, multiple times, right? Seven times or so. This is the third time. I'm going to pretty much just rotate it very close to each other as well. You can overlap as well, right? Something like this. Okay, let's do something like this as well. I think this is like, what, copy like one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? And I'll do like another one here. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with this, right? Just a very simple sort of like, or like, or like, almost said ordeal. That's not the right word for this. Anyway, you can see on the right-hand side, left a little bit of space as well, because when you guys are dragging and moving around your liquify tool, you're going to end up, of course, taking pic uh, pixels and pushing them over towards the right-hand side. So you could fill the entire thing, but I've also learned for myself that it looks better in my instance that when I do not fill off the entire thing. So seven or so uh, shapes is pretty good for me. So this is shape number three, four, five, six, and seven. I believe that's if I can count, hopefully. Um, Cool. So when we have this, we're going to end up taking the actual shapes. So if you guys do not know, when you guys are on your movement tool and you hold control on your keyboard, you actually select each and every different shape as you guys can like, you don't have to like search through the layers or whatnot. So if I want to select this shape, I could. I'm holding control, by the way. If I want to select this shape, I could. I'm holding control, by the way. You see how it kind of works? If you guys do not have this enabled, for some reason, it uh, maybe groups the entire thing, right? Make sure you guys actually have it set to actually pick the layer, not the group. By default in Photoshop, you auto select the actual group and not the layer. So make sure you guys turn that on if you guys want to actually do what I'm doing, which is basically saying, hey, I want to choose this uh, shape right here. Hold control, select it. Now that I have this shape selected, I can then press control J on my keyboard to make a duplicate. So this is going to be my light one. <laughs> so you guys can see it, right? So it's the same exact shape as before on the same exact area. I'm going to open up the actual effects. Okay. I'm going to turn off drop shadow as well as the uh, gradient overlay. And I'm going to double click on this. Okay. And I'm also going to turn on stroke. I'm going to make sure the position is located on the inside. That'll get the best color because the outside has like a, uh, did you guys hear that? I have no idea if you guys that picked that up. Um, but on the outside, you guys will basically see uh, like a, 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 sh a lower shade of the color because of drop shadow itself. Um, anyway, I'm going to choose my color now. I'm going to go with basically a good yellow. Okay. Once I have this, you can also change this, by the way, fill type. A lot of people do not know this. Fill type, you can make it a gradient, just so you guys know. If you guys have, like, really cool gradients, you want to make it a gradient, make it, like, super colorful and whatnot, you can also uh, do that. It's pretty cool. Okay? So, when you guys have this, you want to make sure your fill is also from 100%, <coughs> Jesus Christ, uh, it's at 100% all the way down to zero, just like so. So, what that basically ends up doing is it actually gets rid of the entire uh, shape itself. It only leaves the layer styles on it. So, you can see it only has a yellow on it. Okay? So, with this now... I would immediately, okay, right click on this and copy this layer style, right? This exact layer style that we have, when we put it on different shapes, of course, it'll quick uh, kind of like make the process really easy and just kind of like do this over and over again. So once you copy the layer style, then you can right click on this layer and convert it into a smart object. Then you want to put a layer mask on it, which is basically a nice eraser. So if you guys use a black brush, it erases. You can see it right here, a black brush erases. If you press X on your keyboard, it switches between black and white. And of course, if you probably guessed it, white fills it in when you guys are hovered and clicked over this uh, masking tool here. Okay. So then you can just kind of say to yourself, I want these really nice little, little streaks kind of going in and out, right? That one's done. We're going to do the next one. I'm going to say this shape right here. I'm going to do next. Okay. Control J on my keyboard. This is basically light number two. Okay, I'm going to right click, paste layer style. It'll give me the same exact layer style we just did before. Okay, and you can already guess, uh, convert it to smart object. Put it on the layer mask, take my brush, take my black brush, and erase it and give it some streaks. And we're going to basically do this a couple more times. I'll say like two or two or three. <laughs> okay, do it like that. So the reason why we actually did this, if you probably uh, probably saw my example, you see this like random secondary color in there, but perfectly lined with the actual liquify. It's simply, you can also do this in post as well if you guys think about it. Let's say if you want to add uh, more uh, lights, you basically like kind of hover over this, right? I'm just going to say this right now, right? You kind of say, hey, I'm going to pencil that little bit of a line. I'm going to use a brush, number two brush, hunter hardness, pencil, right click on a new layer, okay? Right click, stroke path, brush, and it basically takes the color of your actual uh, foreground color. You know, of course, you can then change it to whatever color you guys had before. This is just so you guys know for the ahead of time. I'm not going to really, this is not about the tutorial, really, but then you kind of erase it with a soft brush then. 
and then kind of add some more if you guys want to do that but to kind of not have to do that you would just do it now with this very simple process right so now that we have this i can go ahead and take all the actual the, the first shit that i have on the top so imagine this is not here so you take your the first layer at the top all the way to the bottom so hold shift select the actual background layer press ctrl j basically when you hold shift and select one layer on the top one layer on the bottom holding shift selects all the layers that are in between so then press ctrl j then ctrl e to merge it all together and then once you guys have this we go to filter liquify and the liquify that we're using is called the forward wrap tool and the size we're going to be going for is about 750 you guys can go higher most likely going to go like to like maybe like 950 950 75 pressure 100 density and zero rate so then you literally just take it now and don't be like too chaotic with it don't like go you know consistently 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 of course one your i guess your photoshop's gonna lag right but i uh, also want to go backwards is restore all right or press Control alt z i don't know if that works it does just so you guys know Control alt z also does work inside liquify um right but i'm gonna be very very like how do you say uh mm, what's the word i'm looking for we're gonna be very not aggressive with it what's the word holy we're gonna be very yeah hopefully you guys help me out there um okay just like a few times so realistically we're not doing this right we're, we don't want to keep stretching it and stretching it and stretching it and kind of like do this that's exactly what we don't want to do we want to be very sort of whatever the word i'm looking for right and kind of be cautious with it and give very very kind of the word i just need a word dude help uh I'm gonna go again right don't be afraid to go again uh -huh. I can have the most fun with this ever or be super stressed and I'm gonna do it one more time if I don't get it for this time I'm gonna actually just kind of speed this part up so you guys can get a better look um oh yeah that's not uh one more time what if I do a bigger brush 1200 okay All right I'm gonna try it again I think that was my problem I'm gonna say this is a pretty good size, uh, but it's not what I want, right? So it takes some time to get something that you want. I'm actually gonna say this is pretty good, okay? So once you guys have something you guys like, of course, like, you press okay, right? And I got something like this. Yeah, that's actually not bad at all. This looks pretty good. So with this now, I can then put on my little color correction that I have that turns it into the color that I want personally. I'm actually gonna give you guys a color correction for a second. And so you guys have it. This is a huge situation, of course. So I literally went to adjustments right which is down here and use hue saturation as well as gradient map is in there as well so these two things are in there so for my hue and saturation um when you guys have the colors that i chose you guys can actually choose and move it over to the left hand side a little bit more right it's weird how this works but the way these colors are actually working with us we have to actually change the hue a little bit more to around here maybe so negative 31 for me 53 saturation as well as three lightness and the gradient map that's on this is a really really pretty much like a, a kind of like a rainbowed gradient um on the left hand side i'm just gonna run through this zero one eight eight zero excuse me zero one eight eight a zero then a second one here you just basically click on the gray area it makes a new little nub for you guys i guess you would say right so this is all a simple pure black <clears throat> on the right hand side here is a pink f6325b and on the right hand side of it is a yellow which is hex code uh, ffc12d and on the right hand side is a black pure black and also have my midpoint here kind of hugging the black just a bit right then you can press ok and then you guys can go ahead and once you guys have this what i would like to do is basically the same thing again right the top layer hold shift take the background layer Control j Control e to merge it all together and this is where the fun bit starts i guess you would say is when you right click on this convert it into a smart object then we're going to use filter uh, uh not liquify but uh color filter or uh, color raw filter excuse me and we're going to go into that third and fourth tab or fourth and we're gonna we're kind of gonna sit in the fourth fifth in the first tab a bit so in the first tab you might basically say to yourself i want the uh exposure to be up a little bit maybe the shadows themselves the highlights themselves i would also add a bit of clarity okay with a bit of clarity maybe you want to add a little bit more white in there i would not touch the temperature and tint that's not going to give you the best look possible but it's also going to give you good looks as well if you guys want to try it out um you can see it doesn't, it doesn't do too much but you can get some really cool colors maybe you might say oh that looks freaking dope that looks super cool so tint does work but i would like for you guys to explore more towards the uh hsl adjustments which is basically saying to yourself hey for the actual hue of the reds i can make this whatever color i want i'll make this orange right it looks pretty good then i can go ahead and say yo what about these blues right what about these blues i want them to be like this that's pretty cool right let's say the magentas there's no magentas in here but 
I would say that that blue is pretty cool. Maybe the luminance, you want the blue to kind of pop out just a little bit more. Right, you can take the luminance up a bit. Or go back to the first tab and take your shadows and throw them up a little bit as well. Right? So I'm going to say that's pretty good. Orange, let's put that saturation up. Red, let's put that saturation up. Let's go ahead and kind of say that's a way better orange. And I can also go into my split toning. So for my shadows, I can just kind of put this up a little bit on the hue bar. Take my saturation, put this up a little bit as well. Right? And then move my first hue bar just like so left and right. And you might get some even cooler colors to work with. I would even say that's pretty freaking dope. Um, so for quick reference, if you guys see more of these lines, I don't know if you can tell on actual video, but right now there's like these little banding lines. If there's too many of those, go into the third tab, which is the detail and sharpening. You can add a bit of sharpen. I would say nothing too much above like 30, but 25 is pretty good. All these settings pretty much stay the same. But for the noise reduction, take the luminance and put this up a bit, right? When I say a bit, probably like 100%, but maybe the luminance detail needs to go up as well. I'll say that's pretty good when yours are more like kind of like showing a lot more uh, You won't have to actually put the luminous detail up so much or luminous actual the first bar here But as you can see there's not really many. It's really really smooth now I don't know if you can tell on camera but you can see those little lines here if you put this up it gets rid of it right press OK that'll make it as smooth as possible while also making a very cool color scheme and while also making the abstract insert title video here there you go so I hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today. With that being said, I hope you guys make some really cool things with it. Show me on Twitter, all that good stuff. So follow me on Twitter for first off, uh, at SysHQ. Also follow me on just like Instagram. I'm trying to grow my Instagram as well, a little bit. Why not? And uh, if you guys are not subscribed yet, be sure to uh, click the actual little bell icon as well as press the little big red button down there as well. And uh, that's it. 200 likes in the video because a secret down below, which almost like it be random, fun patterns, different shapes to kind of work with, all that good stuff. I appreciate you guys so very much. Uh, here's my one minute banner design tutorial in 18 minute video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. And I'll talk to you guys later. Since so HQ out, do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive and stay freaking productive guys later and much love.